Hello. Uh, this is Jessica. Um, and we're going to be painting a squirrel together today. This will be, I think, my sixth video that I've done now. One every Sunday for about, I think it's, I think it's six, six weeks now. Uh, let's see, we've done a giraffe, a sloth, a bunny, uh, uh, some sort of bird, like a toucan. Anyway, let's just do a, uh, a freaking squirrel. So I was debating between doing a squirrel and I was thinking maybe of doing a bee, but the squirrel one, uh, I think they're just a little cuter or, uh, one of those murder wasps, um, murder hornets. I decided against the murder hornet. That was in the running too. Said no thanks. Let's just do a squirrel. Uh, the reason we're doing a squirrel today, besides the fact that they're just cute, uh, and fluffy and they make me happy, is because, you know what, I think that's, that is the reason, is they're cute and fluffy and they make me happy. So, let's do it. Uh, so what I've done so far is I've, uh, I've put this blue painter's tape around the edges just so that I can have a border. What I'm going to be using is acrylic paints. Like I have, like this type, you know, kind of basic acrylic paints. That one's a little empty, but some of them are fancier than others. This, you know, this is my collection that looks kind of everywhere. So I'll be using some, uh, probably, I'm thinking browns and reds and whites and um, maybe oranges and yellows for this one. So we'll, we'll go through those colors. Uh, last time I decided to go for some gold. I might do that again this time. This gold is fun to work with. So what I use for that is this, I don't know if you can see, but it's like, it says metallic, metallic elegant finish. It's just acrylic paint. Yeah, I'm gonna have a bottle of water here somewhere too. But what we're gonna do first is the sketch. So we'll just start with um, our layout being more or less uh, a portrait rather than a landscape layout because our squirrel's gonna gonna sit up. The paper can be any type of paper that you want. I I'm using the same paper as I have the last five times. It's this uh, watercolor paper. Uh, it's really, it's nice paper. Um, I'm just kind of using it up because I really haven't had a, a good reason to use it till, till now. And I figured it needed to be used because it's big and it's cool. So let's start, shall we? So when we do a squirrel, what shall we start with? Let's do, so they got, I got some little rump area. So maybe that's, that can be what we do first. So start from maybe the middle of your canvas and get that rump in. Make sure you leave some room on the edge though, because we're going to want to start that tail. So we'll maybe put it in about this far. You don't even need to turn it in that much, but. And attached to that, we'll put the beginning of like a, some sort of head formation here. So what he's going to be doing is kind of uh, holding something, and you can make him hold whatever you want, but um, I'm choosing a little cup. So I'm going to be drawing a cup. You can have him holding, uh, you know, a strawberry or I don't know, whatever you feel like having. So now that you have kind of a shape for a head and a shape for the booty right here, you're going to want to put uh, part of his leg here too. So it's going to come right around going to end right here. And this is where you're going to put the foot. So we're just mapping out the area where it's going to be. I'm going to put one of the ears around this area and one of the ears around this neighborhood. And then here's the fun part. There's always got to be some sort of fun part. The fluffy tail. So it's going to curve around. And you know how that you've seen, everybody's seen squirrels. They're in everybody's neighborhoods. They, I think, I don't know, everywhere I've been, they've, they've been around. Just kind of let it, uh, let it do whatever you think it needs to do. 
Again, this is just the sketch, so you're going to want to just do whatever you feels right. It doesn't have to be set in stone. Something that looks like an area where there could be a tail. So now you have an area that could be a tail, a back, a leg, and let's place the eye. Oh, you have a couple ears. So let's place the eye somewhere around here. That's going to be one eye, and you're going to see a little bit of the other eye right here. So we'll put a little bump right there. So you can see it's starting to form a little bit. He's looking cute. Well, not super cute yet. His face looks a little funky. We'll have to fix that up a little. And I hope that you all have a something that I don't have. An eraser. Because everybody needs every once in a while to just go over some scribbles and and help your own self out a little bit. So the eye is gonna wanna be something that looks like this. And then you can even go through and Make something that's like a little bit of a nose here, a little bit of a mouth. And of course, their cheeks are super chubby because they're squirrels. And you don't need to go too much further than that. All right. So here's Mr. Squirrel. Just getting started with his day. We have um, a few squirrels outside that we like to look at and feed. Oh, my husband feeds uh, peanuts, and I like to feed them apples, little slices of apples. And I have no idea how many there are, but we like to we like to check them out. I just they're so darn cute. I'm a sucker for cute things, you know. So you can uh, finish out this ear a little bit. Um, has a thick area right here. So this will be the inside of the ear. And then this will be just the ear on the opposite side, kind of peeking up and over the forehead. And the, this area right here. And of course, you know, when you when you paint it in, this will be fluffy, hairy business. His eye might not be so big. We don't want to go crazy here with his eye. All right. So what I've decided to do, <laughs> that's awesome. Okay, so um, what I've decided to do is I've decided to give him or her a little cup of tea. So, you know how they like to hold things, like, when they're eating? You can, you can add whatever you want, but this is going to be a little teacup or a little cup of coffee or, I don't know, the drink of choice. Maybe, maybe he's got vodka in there. I don't know. I don't judge. A little handle. Some little, uh squirrel fingers <laughs> make sure you you know that these are going to happen too whiskers are cute all right and um you know, you can go back and find out what you've done that you want to change. Uh, I think that there's a couple things here that I want to change. This is a little too high up here. It looks like he's really crouching down. And it's a little abstract for me. So, And I also want to make sure I get part of this arm. Arm? Yeah, arm. I don't know. Sometimes animals have different names for things. But I'm pretty sure it would be an arm still. And I can move his leg back a little bit. And this will be where his little toes are. Toes, feet, all that good stuff. All right, so now that I got that in, I got part of the arm, little fingers, little coffee cup, vodka cup. What is this squirrel drinking, you know? I don't know. I don't know what he knows. So, leg is still looking funky. Bear with me. I'm going to fix this up real good. Now, I'm not ashamed of using my eraser. It's all good. You know, you can, you can use it till it's a little nub. 
it's not going to hate you for it. Always get a new one. All right. But I'm going to put a little bit higher up. Like there. Just a little bit of an adjustment. You're going to make a little area where you can see a belly. Maybe this other area where the foot and the back comes into play. And there's some little toes in there. Three toes or so. So we'll have a front leg with a little foot and toes, a belly with no toes, and then another hind leg with toes. So again, toes, no toes, and then your toes. Got it, guys? So here we go. I think that's. I think that might be good enough for the sketch. Um, we're gonna have a little bit of coloration going on. Now uh, we might want to map out a little bit, and his head might not look completely the way that I want it. I'm gonna work on that just just for a second. Make sure he's like super cute, not just kind of. So his little lip is going to uh, hang over this cup. Yeah. Hi, Gil. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah, and uh, there's going to be some more, more of that. But what's he standing on? Who knows? I think that I want to have him stand on... Oh, like wood. I want to do some wood texture. Like wood grain. That could be fun. Or maybe a picnic table. Yeah, I think I'd rather do a picnic table. So I'm just going to like make a, some sort of cloth looking thing. Get some um, some of this going on. Why not? All right. There he is. Now let's start painting, shall we? So I'm going to do the same thing that I did before and a, a couple other paintings. And I'm just going to work around the outside first and then fill in the inside. So um, since I said he was going to be, um, I, I said he was going to be like brown. This is going to be like red and white. Um, I suppose green would be good for the background. It's kind of like a picnic -y type thing going on. Maybe he's like he or she like sipping some uh, hot cocoa on a camping trip or something. That could be cute. I think that's really cute. Yeah. Alright. Give me a second here. I'm doing my paint brushes. Not as prepared as I normally am, but you know what? Yes. See how it is. So I'm just pouring some water, get my paints ready. Um, you can finish up with your squirrel while I'm doing that. Squirrel. Yeah. Okay. I think I have all my paintbrushes. So today I'm using this big boy right here for the background. It's called a large filbert. Say hello to large filbert. Large filbert's uh, a handmade modern for blending and coverage. I guess then that's appropriate because I'm going to do some coverage here. Um, I, I really am not a fan of these brushes. I never... I never find too much use of these fan blenders. And this thing looks like it should have been retired a while ago. And this is my detailed brush. So let's just use big boy and a detail brush. So I'm going to put some blue and some yellow. I've got some phthalo blue and some probably cadmium yellow somewhere. Oh, 
I know I have some yellow. a lot of different types of yellows, but I'm looking for one in particular that I like. Sometimes you gotta squeeze the crap out of these things. Um, see how empty it looks, like on first glance. You know, there's like a toothpaste. If you try really hard, you can always get some more out. It'll make some fun noises while you try. All right. It's out. We're back in business. So I'm just blending, blending. And I'm going to get some water. Uh, what I like to do is I like to make sure I use plenty of water. If you've seen any of my videos before, you'll know that this is so. So I'm just making your basic background and just avoiding the area where the squirrel is so that I can paint that in later. And all I've done is, I mean, if you have a green, you can use a green, but um, I'm using a, a blue and a yellow so that I can get some uh, variations in my tones. It's really all up to you though, whatever you feel like doing. Everybody's got their own style. And you know, it's it's not against the rules to also like change your style every once in a while. That totally rhymed. But you can if you want. It's not like uh it's not illegal. It's okay. So say you do a lot of uh, blendy stuff, normally you're, uh, you're into this type of thing, and then one day you think, I wonder what it would be like to paint a bunch of flat stuff. I just use flat colors. Who's telling you you can't? Go for it. Alright, so we're just kind of going along, painting a squirrel, as we do on uh, Sundays. I don't really know if I have too much information about squirrels. Uh, let's see, what is my what is my history with a squirrel? Um, a squirrel was actually the first thing that I ever did a sculpture of. And I had like a art teacher who told me I had to uh, draw all angles of the squirrel first before I got to sculpt it. And so by the time I got to sculpt it, I was like really anxious and really ready to just do it rather than sit and keep drawing all these angles of all these squirrels. So it was kind of interesting. And we ended up making a mold and casting, yeah, casting a mold of it. So I made a few, a few squirrelies. All right. That was fun. Okay, I'm gonna get a little bit more green in here. Maybe some uh, shapes that are like um, you know, trees or a, uh, what do you call those things? Leaves. That's it. It's a leaf. Those green things that stick out of trees. What are those things called? Yeah. Okay. Here yeah, she. So we have uh we have the background. So now we have to make sure that it dries. Let's go like this for about 10 minutes. 
Just kidding. I'm not gonna. We're not gonna do that. Let's instead um, do. Do you guys want to do the squirrel part or the ground part? I don't know, Jessica. Let's uh, let's do the ground part. Okay. I don't really. We'll just do what you guys say. Let's do the ground part. So I did say that I wanted to make this uh, a checker. I'm having second thoughts. I kind of want to make it. Um, I want to make it wood. I, Keep changing my mind about things. It's my friggin' prerogative to change my mind about things. So I'm gonna make it wood. It's gonna be sitting on a tree, a tree limb. It's not gonna be on a picnic table. You're a fired squirrel. Didn't even know it hit him. He doesn't even know. All right. Onward. We get some brown out. I got some burnt umber. Put it on the palette. Burnt umber. Here we go. Okay. So for wood grain, I'm just going to do, um, actually I should probably do a few colors. I should probably do brown and uh, like a lighter color too. Get some more yellow in there. This yellow. Let's see. It's coming out though. Paint all over my hands. So we're getting some brown in here. And make sure you paint, if you're going to do wood grain, like I'm doing, I mean, it's not required or anything. But if you're going to do wood grain, try to paint in the direction that the wood is going. You know how, like, you know how wood grain be like, all like that. Just paint in the dang direction. That's, that's my advice. Make sure you keep some of those brush strokes. We're going to use them later. You don't want to blend it completely. Use some different colors if you want. Put in some yellow. And the most important thing is just to make sure you have fun. Otherwise, this, this squirrel will have been painted in vain. We don't want that. Nobody wants that. I don't know if there's anything worse. Okay. So we have a basic uh, wash for the bottom area and for the top area. Some colors. And this squirrel, uh, you know, there's like, what, red squirrels, gray squirrels, brown squirrels. I don't know if there's any other ones. Red squirrels. Oh, I said that. So if you also want to go in with your wood grain and use, so I've got this uh, flat brush, with this flat edge. See how it's like thin, thick, thin, thick. Use the thin edge. Get some. Get some uh, wood grain um, lines. It's random. You don't want to make them uh, make too much sense because if they're um, if they're too organized, they're not going to look natural. You know, they're going to look like uh, man-made wood grain, like Pergo flooring. Well, you know, Pergo's Pergo's not too bad. No, it, well, you know, it's got those repeating patterns. It's it's still still not the real thing. So you want to make it look like random, like thicker, thinner lines. And um, sometimes they'll go out and then come back in again and have like these knots. So you can even do uh, like a knot. Let's try that. Uh, let's try a knot, right? Like, let's put it right here. So it goes out and then 
And then it goes out and then and then it has this part on the inside that's like darker. And then like uh and it follows this edge a little bit more. Something like that. I don't know. Just experiment and do whatever you feel like. If you see a piece of, of wood laying around and you're like, what an inspiration. Like, use that. Look at it. Let it move you. Let the wood move you. I'm going to use red, red and, uh, let's see, more of a reddish, reddish brown for the squirrel. Uh, yeah, I think I will use more, more like a reddish brown for the squirrel. Maybe a little bit lighter, so I'll include white too. Um, and that'll be the next thing I work on. You can see too much of this. Is that better? Yeah. All right, so take them away. I'm gonna get some red. I don't know, this one's kind of nice. Cadmium red. No, oh, that's all dried up. Pretty sure I was meant to throw this away. All right, so, um, you know, if you're, if you're in the middle of doing your squirrel right now, painting the background, then um, you can keep doing that while I'm screwing around with some squirrel color. But uh, if you're at the point where I am, then you're probably wondering what to do next. You're like, man, I wish she'd actually just do something. So let's, let's just let's do it. So I'm going to get a little bit of a lighter color. I'm going to use some white. All right, in the middle of my stuff is so some white, some red, some yellow, some brown. And just mix all that together. Let's see what you come up with. If you're like, oh, I wish it was more red, then add some more red. And if you're like, oh, it's that's funky, then add some whatever color you kind of want. Mine's starting to look a little orange, which is kind of neat. So. And just uh, go for it. It's healthy. Don't forget, um, make sure that you get some hair in there. These guys are fluffy. They're not exactly smooth. And go the direction, you know, the hair goes the direction that uh, hair ought to go. So in the leg area, it'll be going this way. You know, if you're not really sure what direction the hair goes, it's fine to look at pictures. Uh, but take my word for it, you know, this hair is going the way that I'm showing you. You can always do that. You don't have to look at it. So, I know, uh, make sure you use the same color all throughout the body or else it'll look like two different animals. I, you know, stuff you already kind of know. There's not really much I can tell you at this point. Um, find a light source um, if you want to make some heavy shadows and highlights. We can do that later, too. Some of the items, like this back leg, is going to be slightly darker, and we can work on that a little bit later, too. And it's going to have, uh, there are some areas in the squirrel 
of a squirrel that have lighter areas and darker areas, like the fur is lighter and some uh, darker. Like um, the belly is usually lighter. You can keep that light. Certain areas of the face, uh, this looks white around the eye, and I marked out. That fluffy tail in there. So, what direction does this hair go? It kind of goes up. Yeah. And give that guy a nice, luxurious tail. Maybe not exactly no where your boundaries are, what you want to paint quite yet, where where you want your line to end or begin, then just water down some color, like just really water it down and make the lightest the lightest color you can. And you can always just it'll it'll help you decide where stuff goes later on. It'll just kinda of help you fill in the blank. It's just best to a lot of times, you know, moving forward is just a best course of action, even if you don't know what you're doing. Especially when it comes to painting, because it's, it's not, it's taken me like, uh, some paintings has taken me like a year to finish, and that's just silly. It shouldn't really take that long to finish a painting. I mean, it's okay sometimes, but make a decision, right? So, this light's all fucked up. Okay. So hopefully you can see kind of what's going on, more or less. Does that kind of work better? Yes, I think it does. Let's try that. All right. So you've got your basic colors down. Uh, you've got your squirrel shape. And now I'm going to do some more of the detail. So some of my detail may include the little guy's eye. I'm going to keep using this dark brown. I'm kind of with the dark brown. So we're gonna let's go for this. And don't forget, you know, you might wanna add a little might wanna add a little shine. And you can always make it darker later. I like that. What color should I make the cup? I don't know why I'm so indecisive about this. Let's just do blue. Let's make a decision, okay? Go with blue. Okay. And then we just go around the little fingers just a little bit. Give this guy a tip. Baby wants some tea. Isn't that right, baby? Oh, what is that? What's that movie? Freaking, um, the Dirty Dancing? This one made me watch that the other day. Because he said it's, like, super funny, and I didn't really get it till I watched it. And I'm like, yeah, it is kind of funny. I mean, I'd seen it before. It's so super cheesy. I didn't really take it for uh, the camera value. There's some. 
So I just make a cup. That is what I do. Of course, you know, you don't have to do silly stuff like this. You can be totally serious and, and make your squirrel hold a, a nut. That's serious stuff right there. I swear will tell you they're not screwing around when they're holding a nut. Have you ever tried to, um, oh my gosh, this is terrible. And I don't know if I should disclose this information, but uh, there's only like two here, so here's a, here's my secret. Um, I know it's really rude, and I but I've done this. It's, um, I've seen squirrels that hide the nuts in the ground, and then I see them go up into a tree, and they watch me as I as I dig them back up, and they get so angry, and it's. So Friggin' funny. I did this before, but I have a conscience now, and I don't, I don't do it anymore. I promise you, it's not. I've grown up. I've learned that that's just not a nice thing to do. You don't just go around and dig up a squirrel's nut. It's just, that's unethical, isn't it? It's unethical, definitely. So we'll go through and we'll make some of these areas a little bit darker, like the inside of the ear. That will be darker. Don't, don't hide the squirrel's nuts from, don't take the squirrel's nuts. You know, they have their plan. They work hard for their nuts. So hard for their nuts. So you better treat them right. Okay. Okay. This little guy. So do some details around those little fingers too. Um, you know, it's it's just it's not it's just a goofy ass painting, right? Make sure you don't take yourself too seriously with this. It's kind of ridiculous. Some areas kind of give this some, oh, some hair, some fluff, if you will. So what I'm doing is I'm using a just kind of a quick brush stroke with my my smallest, tiniest uh, paintbrush, watering down some some brown, some dark brown, and giving the this little fella some hair. And again, I'm going in the direction where the hair goes, naturally, like I'm letting it guide me. I'm not inventing hair. I'm not inventing the way, the, the new direction the hair is going to go. I'm just following what I kind of already know about the way hair goes. And applying that to our little girl hair. So if you're following along and you're uh, painting along, then congratulations, you've, you're doing a thing. And also, uh, if you're painting along, then not only congratulations, you're doing a thing, but also please feel free to share with me your painting when you're done because I would like to see the thing. It would 
make me super happy. And that's what we're all here for, right? It's just to make me super happy. Ah, that's why I'm here. Actually, uh, I started doing this just to entertain my friends, but for reals, dude. Just feel like I'm down with entertaining myself at this point. And it's also helped me, I mean, it's helped me, um, <laughs> uh, it's helped me figure out what day it is, too, because I know that I paint on Sundays, and I can't, you know, that's something to, I know it's silly, because I've been on furlough, so I, I, I'm forgetting what days, what days are days. Are they days? Yeah, so it's Sunday. Not today. If there's stuff behind, other stuff, it gets a shadow, you know the rules. If it's stuff layered behind other stuff, it can have a shadow. You get a shadow. You get a shadow. You know, depending on what you get done after an hour, there's always more time to finish. If you feel like you want to finish something, that's fine. I ended up, uh, with the last painting that I did, I ended up um, spending another, well, at least another couple hours finishing it because I just didn't feel like it was quite done. You can make it basically whatever you want to make it. You feel like you're not getting anywhere and you just want to scrap it because this painting is not going to make you happy and you know it. Toss it. Toss that sucker. So, um, I don't know. Maybe this is a good paintbrush for the, the tail. I'm just going to try it. Every time I use it, it's a um, this thing, it's a god dang disaster, but you never know. Maybe this time will be different. Ooh, maybe this time it'll be different. In this last words. All right, so I'm just gonna go like. Fan brush. Magic. <laughs> so what I'm doing right now is adding a lot more water than I had because you see how dark that is. I didn't I didn't put plan for that, but that's okay. It's all about adapting to your mistakes. <laughs> make a mistake and then you're like all right let's let's make another mistake in another area to make it look like it was on purpose isn't that what you guys do when you make a mistake because uh, that's what i do it's called the steve urkel method of making mistakes no that would just be denial or This looks like these three different colors. I don't want to fix that. If somebody knows if I'm like uh, doing this fan brush wrong, please don't let me know. Just let me live in ignorance. I know for sure this is wrong. Yeah. But it's fun, so whatever. Alright. I'm getting 
silly. Okay, I'm going to do some more detail on this guy's face, I think. Give it a little bit more color. I'll put some red on there. Go ahead and put whatever colors you feel like putting on. You know, I'm going with red. Uh, no particular reason other than I kind of am feeling red right now. If you're feeling purple or blue, just do that. And the, the squirrel, um, I promise you the squirrel had nothing to say about that. He decided to paint the squirrel blue, it's not going to get mad. Nobody's going to get mad. Isn't that nice to know? No consequences. Just paint your dang squirrel the way you want it. And I'm sure there are, are times, though, when, when people will care. Uh, what your painting looks like, like if you're painting a, a portrait of them and you made them look all messed up. Just don't do that though. It's simple. Use your detail brush and start doing some whiskers. The detaily details. Make sure you save like that stuff for the end. Yeah, so um, I would have to say after after um, doing this six times, pretty confidently that an hour is not really enough time to get a good, a good painting done, in my opinion. That's just an opinion. I'm sure other people can have their opinions, but I don't know. It just doesn't seem like you can get the amount of detail and everything that you need. Or I can't get it. The amount of detail and everything that I need in just an hour, especially with the size and all these colors and all that stuff. It's just, it just doesn't seem like enough time to me. Yeah, especially something like this where you've got, like, you could, I mean, potentially spend all friggin' night just making strands of hair as detailed as you want. Which, like, I mean, honestly, I've, I've done stuff like that before, like this. Hair after strand of hair after strand of hair after strand of hair. It's actually kind of nice. It's, uh, you would think it might be boring or whatever, but you get into, like, this zone where, um, it's not a chore. 
mean, you could, you could try it if you wanted to. I might do this later. It's kind of do a bunch of hair, but. I've also found out, because I did a, um, I painted a lion. It's a lion. And I did this to the lion. Did the hair, 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 hair. And it was like, you know, on a mane. Holy crap, it took forever. And it ended up looking like a, his hair was thinning. He was a balding lion after all the hair and all the work that I put in. I'm like, damn, it's still not enough hair. Friggin' lion. And it's fine. It ended up okay. But in a way, sometimes I look at that painting, I'm like, ah, it's just not, not hairy enough. some work on his face, I think, uh, but he's getting there. It's, it's, he needs some work a few, uh, few places. But I'm just going to fill in some areas where uh, I know what direction the hair goes. And the nose, it'll go straight down. Kind of get those low-hanging fruit. And things that you know first and then if you have trouble later um, look it up or find some resource or just guess right so like I don't know for sure where the ear goes but let's just try over here and so it ends up looking goofy because it might look cool Get some yellow in here too. Uh, if we have a, some highlights, maybe. And again, some eyes. You know, if you don't like your painting, or if you like, you know, if you like your painting, and uh, but you don't like it enough to put it on your wall, you can always give it to somebody. If you like it enough to put it on your wall, you can do that. If you don't like it at all, you can put it in recycling. If you um, don't like it, but you know somebody who might like it, then give it to them. Or just keep it in your sketchbook so that you can remind yourself how far you've gotten, you know, in your artistic journey, if you're on one. I don't know how many people uh, listening are on a journey, but you know, enjoy that. Looks like my neighbors are on a journey. Make sure we get plenty of hair in there. Hair everywhere.
Okay, yeah. So, I mean, shoot. If I could do, uh, do all this hair till the cows come home, or I could do some wood green. <clears throat> Add some different colors in there. Some red in the well, maybe some orange. All And you can make this as realistic or as abstract as you want, don't forget. A lot of times I'll end up making stuff that's uh, kind of cartoony. And that's just because it's uh, flat all out. So it's always good to just experiment to find out what you truly like. So that you can enjoy what you're painting. And of course, a good rule of thumb is to just you know take it from the, uh, the big stuff to the little stuff. The, the main, uh, you know, the um, the washes and the big lines, and then work your way down to the details and the smaller lines, and then uh, work from lighter to darker. So you'll get your light stuff in there first, and then you'll work with your darker colors to get some shadows. And it's just, um, you know, when you work sometimes it's hard to get white in there for highlights. So um, you can always mask things out too, like this blue stuff, but uh, they have liquid masking you know, liquid, liquid mask stuff. It's always really fun to use. So you can paint, what you do is you paint it on first. Like if you wanted to keep this eye white and keep it, um, and then paint around it. And then you just, uh, I think it has like a special eraser or something that erases out the masking um, agent when it's dry and when, you're, when your paint is dry. It's cool and it's fun. I haven't used it in a while. So I'm, I'm going to want to make some things a little bit darker, like this eye. So I'll just go in there with the blue, a dark, dark blue. I don't really like these black, I just like these dark colors, but sometimes I'll end up using, very rarely I'll use black. <laughs> Deep shadows, wherever you want to have them. In between the toes, maybe is a good spot. Yeah, where else could be a good spot? Inside of the ears could be a good spot for like a deep, deep shadow. Deep, deep shadows right here, maybe. So going on. Underneath the the fingers. There we go. And of course, Looks like he pees his pants. Oh well. It happens to the best of us, old guy. Alright. Oh my gosh, it's eight o'clock, so more or less, there she is. I'll probably end up uh, doing a little bit more of this later, especially when it's um 
So every time I do this, I don't know if you know, but I'm doing this sideways, not like from the front. So it's a little bit interesting when I end up looking at it because uh, it doesn't usually end up very much like my initial sketch because I'm working at it from an angle. But if you want to see my initial sketch, this is what, this is what I was hoping to do. Uh -huh, uh -huh. And this is what I got. Wow. Hoping. Reality. Fantasy. Truth. What I, what I was hoping to do today and what actually happened. Anyway. Okay, that's it. See you later. Thank you for joining. I don't even dare